There once was a man who made beautiful dolls of all shapes and sizes. He even made life-size dolls. Many requested these expensive and exquisite dolls. And though these dolls brought the humble man a lot of money, he lived in modesty with his young son, Vine. The young boy was fascinated by his father's work. The doll parts and finished dolls filled the home. Each was unique and had their own beautiful personality. Vine would watch in fascination as his father would paint the delicate lips upon their pale faces. He wanted to be just like his father someday and create gorgeous works of art. One day, a rich businessman requested an ornate life-size doll from the humble doll maker. He went by the name of Gear. However, the doll maker refused to make the doll upon discovering that Gear was crooked and wanted the doll for perverted means. Gear grew enraged at the maker's refusal so enraged that he sent hired arms to get rid of the doll maker. The doll maker's home was set ablaze. He sacrificed himself to save his son from the flames. Vine watched in terror and dismay as his father burned alive before him. His tears only evaporated from the heat as he watched his home turn to rubble and ash. He sobbed over the remains of his father, surrounded by charred remnants of his home, of the once beautiful ornate dolls. They were now melted, distorted, horrid disfigured atrocities of what they once were. Vine searched through the wreckage with his tiny hands, trying to find anything that might have survived the blaze. In the end, all he could find was a life-sized pink glass doll eye. He cupped it in his hands and held it close to his heart, his messy black locks falling in his face. The eye was all he had left. Unfortunately, the terrors were not over for this child. Gear had his hired arms return to the scene of the crime to make sure that the doll maker was truly dead. They found the charred corpse of the once great maker. However, they also came across the sun. Not sure what to do with the child, they abducted him and took him to Gear. Gear had no real means for the child, but decided to keep him. Keep him to replace the doll he never received. He kept Vine for three years, treating him like a doll, an object, playing with him. Vine was his prisoner. The boy couldn't take it anymore, and he began to lose himself. His mind began to deteriorate. One night, while the man loomed over Vine, with him pinned to the bed, trying to play with him. Vine decided that he did not want to play anymore. Vine quickly grabbed a pen off the nightstand and began to stab it through the man's carotid. Blood gushed from the hole. It splattered all over the walls, floor, 
and Vine himself. Vine had just killed a man for the first time. As the body lay there stiffening, Vine stole some money and quickly escaped. Vine then lived on the streets. He wanted to start up the family business again to make dolls. He found a home in an abandoned boarded up apartment in the bad part of town. With the money he stole, he got parts and painted beautiful dolls. He sold them, getting more money, trading up, making more and more beautiful dolls. More life-like dolls. Plastic, clay, and porcelain no longer became enough to satisfy Vine. News Report Missing Teen Murdered A horrific scene was discovered at the town park. Emily Ryder brutally mutilated. Autopsy Report Emily Ryder Cause of Death Blood Loss and Shock Found in what appeared to be an elegant, hand-stitched gown. The corners of Emily's mouth had been sewn into a small smile with lips painted a deep red. Eyes gouged out and replaced with glass ones, fake eyelashes, and painted makeup. Her nails were removed and replaced with fake ones. A frozen expression remained on her face. Her head was shaved and replaced with blue hairs sewn into her scalp, replacing her once blonde locks. And perhaps the most disturbing part, every joint in her body was popped out of their socket or broken. Truly the work of a psychopathic killer. Examination Notes It appears that Emily Ryder was very much alive when the killer started to mutilate her. She was alive as he had her face sewn into place, each lock of her hair tediously sewn into her scalp, and as her eyes were gouged out. She was initially found on a park bench, put in place like a doll on display. This would explain why the joints were popped out of their sockets. It would make it easier to display her in whatever way he pleased. By the way the killing was executed, it appears that the killer views his crimes as works of art. One last document was put in by Jason Harris, a medical examiner. Emily was Vine's second murder, but a first of a string. He got a thrill in creating new dolls, carving into them, making them beautiful. He was now 17. Still living in abandoned homes. <laughs>
finished the job. There was just too much pain. He felt that he failed in making himself beautiful, leaving scars, leaving his face mutilated by his own hands. He knows he is damaged goods. He knows he is worthless. Just like Daddy, right? Please, let me make you all beautiful. <laughs>